Hi, welcome to Chemical Reactions. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about balancing chemical equations. Specifically, we're going to be looking at why are chemical equations balanced, the law of conservation of mass, an example of balancing an equation, rules of balancing equations, walking through balancing an equation, and then finally practice some balancing at the end. Balancing chemical equations. All chemical equations must obey three conservation laws. The conservation of matter or mass, the conservation of electric charge, and finally the conservation of energy. Therefore, the total mass, energy content, and electric charge of the reactants must equal those of the products. The law of conservation of matter states, mass is not created nor is it destroyed. The total mass of the reactants equals the mass of the products. For mass to remain constant before and after a chemical reaction, the number of atoms of each element must be the same before and after a chemical reaction. When the law of conservation of mass is obeyed in a chemical reaction, the reaction is called a balanced equation, and that is what we are looking to do today. Rules for balancing equations. The most important rule is to start with the correct formulas for all the reactants and products in the reaction. If you do not start with the correct formulas, there is no possible way that you're going to be able to balance your chemical reaction, and you are going to be stuck. So please, start with the correct formulas. I cannot stress that enough. The second step is to count the number of atoms of each element in the reactants and products. A good strategy is to begin balancing with elements that appear only once on each side of the equation. So let's look at our example. We have NaOH plus HCl, NaCl, and H2O. If I was going to start balancing this, I would make sure that my formulas are correct, which they are, and then I would start looking for elements that appear only once. So in this situation, I would start with the sodium. So I look over here and there is one sodium on my reactant side and one sodium on my product side. So one sodium atom on reactant, one on the product. The next step is to determine which elements and or ions are present in unequal quantities on the two sides of the equation. So if we go back to the beginning again, we know on the reactant side, one sodium here, one sodium on the product side. So I'm gonna put one and one. Then I'm going to go to the oxygens. I have one oxygen on my reactant side. I have one oxygen on my product side because there is an assumed one subscripted there. So one atom of oxygen here, one atom of oxygen on my product side. Then I'm going to look at my hydrogens. Notice here that there is a total of two hydrogens on my reactant side. So two hydrogens total here. And then this subscripted two tells me that there are two hydrogen atoms on the product side. Finally, let's look at the chlorines. We have one chlorine on the reactant side and one chlorine on the product side. So in this case, with this particular example, this equation is balanced before we really even have to do anything. So the number of atoms on the reactant side equal the number of atoms on the product side for each individual element. If necessary, if you don't have a situation like this where the equation is already balanced, you're going to place coefficients in front of the substances as needed until each element and or ion is present in equal quantities on both sides of the equation. Do not balance an equation by changing the subscripts in the chemical formula of a substance. I can't stress this enough. Don't touch the formulas. That's absolutely key. You cannot touch them. You can only put in coefficients. And I'm going to show you an example of that in a moment. If a polyatomic ion like a nitrate or a sulfate, a sulfite, an acetate, appears on both sides of an equation, the majority of the time, not all the time, but the majority of the time, it can be treated as a single unit and is a really nice shortcut. Finally, make sure all of the coefficients are in the lowest possible ratio. 
So lowest possible whole number. Let's walk through balancing an equation. So here's my example. Fe plus O2 yields Fe2O3. On the left side, so this is my left and this is my right. On the left hand side, there is one atom of iron. So I'm gonna put a one up here and two atoms of oxygen. So I'm gonna put a two right here. On the right side, there are two atoms of iron, two up here, that's what that subscript two right there is telling me, and three atoms of oxygen. So I'm gonna put a three over the top here. To make oxygen equal on both sides, put the coefficient three in front of the O2 and a two in front of the Fe2O3. So I'm going to put a three here. Now when I do that, that changes the number of oxygen that I have on the left hand side. So three times two now gives me six. And if I put a two in front of the Fe2O3, that changes both the number of iron and oxygen that I have on the product side. So instead of two iron, now I have four. Instead of three atoms of oxygen, I now have six. And here's where we can see that we now have a balanced number of oxygens on both sides of the equation. And that's what I'm going to state right here. There are now six oxygen atoms on both sides but we've just messed with the number of iron atoms on the product side. So now there are four iron atoms on the right. Therefore, we need a coefficient of four in front of the Fe on the left. So we need to put a four in front of the Fe. Therefore, the balanced equation is four Fe plus three O2 yields two Fe2 O3. The only thing that we have added in are these coefficients. We have not touched the chemical formulas at all, and that is absolutely key. Now what I'd like you to do is to stop, pause the video, try these on your own, and see how you do. Welcome back, let's see how you did. Balance the following equations. I have N2 plus H2 yields NH3. The first thing I'm going to do is check to make sure my formulas are correct, and they are, and then I'm going to go through and evaluate how many of each element that I have. So I have two nitrogens on my reactant side, two hydrogens here, and on my product side, I have one nitrogen and three hydrogens. So then I gotta figure out, okay, what am I going to balance first? Am I going to balance the nitrogens or the hydrogens? My gut reaction is to go with the hydrogens because I have two hydrogens on this side and three hydrogens on my product side. The smallest number that both of those will divide into is six. So I need to end up with six hydrogens on my reactant side and six hydrogens on my product side. In order to get that, I know that three times two will give me six and two times three will give me six. Therefore, my hydrogens are balanced but I've now changed the number of nitrogens on the product side. So instead of having one nitrogen, I now have two. But it turns out I want to do that because if I go back and I look at my reactant side, I have two nitrogens to start with over on my reactant side and now my nitrogens are balanced. Remember, in front of the nitrogen, there is an assumed one. You do not need to write that in unless your teacher wants you to do so. For students in my class, the one is assumed. It does not need to be written in. Let's look at our next example. We have one phosphorus atom, two oxygen atoms, four phosphorus atoms, and 10 oxygen atoms over on our product side. So this is my reactant side. This is my product side. It really does not matter what element you start with here. So if I look at the phosphorus, one on the reactant side, four on the product side, I can put a four on my reactant side. The phosphorus is balanced. For the oxygen, I have two on my reactant side, 10 on my product side. So I know if I put a five in front of the O2, I now have 10, because five times two gives me 10. There is an assumed one here, therefore my equation is balanced. Let's do some more practice with balancing chemical equations 
but adding a twist to it, going over a little bit with writing chemical formulas. So we're given the following word equation. Sodium phosphate is used to cut grease. Write a balanced equation for the reaction in which iron 2 chloride reacts with sodium phosphate to produce sodium chloride and iron 2 phosphate. This is where it's going to become very, very important that you write the correct chemical formulas before you try to write the chemical equation and then try to balance it. So our first reactant is sodium phosphate. We know sodium ion is Na plus 1 and the phosphate ion is PO4 minus 3. So when we cross these subscripts down, we're going to get Na3 PO4. Iron 2 chloride. Iron is Fe. The Roman numeral tells us it is plus 2. The chloride is Cl minus 1. We're going to cross these down. We're going to get FeCl2. For the products, we have iron 2 phosphate. So iron here is going to be Fe plus 2. The phosphate is going to be PO4 minus 3. I'm going to cross my charges down. So I'm going to have Fe3 parentheses PO4 2. And finally, sodium chloride. Sodium is Na plus 1. Chloride is Cl minus 1. The Na plus 1 and the Cl minus 1 are going to cancel each other out. So NaCl. Now that I have the correct formulas, I can write my chemical equation. So it says sodium phosphate is used to cut grease, write a balanced equation for the reaction in which iron 2 chloride reacts with sodium phosphate. Okay, iron 2 chloride. So that is FeCl2 plus Na3PO4. My arrow, because we're producing sodium chloride, that's NaCl plus iron 2 phosphate, Fe3PO42. Phew, now what I need to do is balance this. So what shall I start with? I think I'm going to start with my polyatomics. I notice that the phosphate ion, the PO4, appears on both sides of the equation, and the phosphorus and the oxygen do not break up. Therefore, I have two phosphate ions on my product side, so I want two phosphate ions on my reactant side. Therefore, I'm going to throw a 2 in front of the entire Na3PO4. Now my PO4 ions are balanced, but my sodium ions are now affected. So 2 times 3 gives me 6 sodiums, so I'm going to put a coefficient of 6 in front of the NaCl, and now I can see that my sodium is balanced. Now let's go to the chlorine. Six chlorines on the product side. I need to get six chlorines on my reactant side. So I need a six right here. Well, I know three times two will give me six. So now I'm going to underline my chlorines because those are balanced. My sodium is balanced. My phosphate is balanced. What is left? The Fe. Well, I have three atoms of Fe on my reactant side, and oh, look, thank goodness, I have a subscript of three over on my product side. The equation is balanced. Uh, there is an assumed one right there, and I am done. So what did you learn? We talked about why are chemical equations balanced. We talked a little bit about the law of conservation of mass. We did an example of balancing an equation. We talked about the rules of balancing equations. We walked through balancing an equation. And finally, we did some practice at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.